so much fun as we welcome in Stan Van Gundy, one of our analysts over on the NBA on TNT side. Glad you could be with us, Coach. And I know how much you enjoy breaking down these games, and I'm just curious, what have you enjoyed the most out of this Western Conference Final Series? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think, number one, I've really watched uh, and enjoyed the way Dallas has progressed on the offensive end of the floor as the series has gone on because Jason Kidd has been emphasizing and emphasizing and emphasizing attacking the paint. And we know how important the threes are to Dallas, but Dallas made 21 threes in game two and got beat. And they got beat because they got outscored 60 to 32 in the paint. And now you see them getting to the last two games where it's a lot more competitive in the paint. Golden State's still outscoring them, but it's like within 10 points, only eight point difference last game. Then you add the threes to that where they had an advantage of 10 last game. Now you can win. And so you noticed them last game in the paint, in the paint, in the paint, throw it out, but not only making threes, but like Dorian Finney-Smith three times attacking the closeout all the way to the rim and score. We didn't see that in the first two games of the series. Um, saw it a lot more, so I, I've enjoyed that. And then watching the Warriors um, and how much the attention on Steph Curry helps everybody else on his team. You see the rest of them get easy baskets. Stan, we know as we get deep into the playoffs, we like to play mind games. So when Jason Kidd says, you know what, guys, they went zone on us because they know they can't stop us. Then that second unit for the Warriors come in and cut the game to 10. How much is that mind game that Jason Kidd is playing with Steve Kerr with a comment like that? I don't know if he's playing a mind game with Steve Kerr. He might be trying to play a mind game with their players. And look, it's not going to change Steve Kerr. We've seen a little bit more zone every game. We'll see a significant amount of it tonight. I do think that Dallas attacked it better. Um, it was the first game of the entire series where they've actually thrown the ball inside. They've driven it some uh, at times in the series against the zone. But, you know, they don't really put anybody inside very often against the zone to throw it in. Um, but last game they did. I thought that helped them a little bit. The fourth quarter that was the only time where they struggled against the zone in game four. And I think that was as much... Uh, uh, you know, a part of just having a big lead and losing focus a little bit. Coach, uh, Jonathan Kaminga really played well last game, his first time getting any real significant minutes in this in this series, and he's a different type of young player. Live body, really active. Golden State doesn't have anybody else on the roster like him. Do you foresee him getting into the game a little bit earlier tonight, or was that just the way the game was played last game? Well, it was interesting because when Otto Porter went out in game three, Steve Kerr went with Juan Toscano Anderson ahead of Kuminga at the end of that game, but then he came with Kuminga the other day. Otto Porter expected back tonight. Um, I'm not sure either one of them uh, get in the game tonight, but as you said, I mean, Kuminga 17 points, eight rebounds the other night. He was very, very good, and he does give them um, an athleticism that they don't really have. I mean, this is a guy that was starting games in the second round. Um, but I've said this several times. A lot of it's matchups and what Steve Kerr thinks you need. There's nobody else in the NBA, certainly at this level, that uses everybody on his roster the way Steve Kerr does. And with that being said, Stan, how big is it to, for us, uh, Jason Kidd to get Dinwiddie going to kind of take some of that pressure off of Luka with being the ball handling facilitator? Yeah, so here's what's happened in what I've seen, right? So game three, Dinwiddie was outstanding. So was Lucas. So was Brunson. Those guys were outstanding. And then the rest of the roster went five for 27 from the floor, two for 20 from three, and they get beat. Now only Brunson of those guys, of the three best players, had an efficient night in game four. But the other guys all shot the heck out of the ball, 14 for 25 from three and over 50% from the floor in general. If they're gonna win on the road here in game five, um, they're gonna need both. They're gonna need Doncic, of course, but Dinwiddie and Brunson also 
to be breaking down the defense and creating shots for themselves and their teammates, and they're going to need those other guys to knock down shots. You're not winning on the road with one or the other. So, Coach, we were just told that Steve Kerr just moments ago said that Otto Porter Jr. is, in fact, out for the game this evening. So you were correct in your assessment that he might not get into the game. Uh, but I'm glad you brought up Jalen Brunson because I'm just wondering why do you think he's been so successful in these playoffs, specifically in this series? He's averaging 20 points. Yeah, listen, Jalen Brunson's remarkable because he's not very tall. We know that. He's a decent shooter from three, but he doesn't shoot a lot of them. He's not an overly quick guy, like he's not an explosive blow-by guy, but he's strong as heck. He's got a great handle, and when he gets in the paint, I don't know if we've ever seen a guard as good with his footwork and his shot fakes after he picks up the dribble in the paint. He puts on a clinic in there, so once he gets in the paint, he's as effective as anybody in this league. I love it. So much fun to watch. Coach, we appreciate you spending some time. We know you have a ton of things to do before the game gets going. Have a good call tonight.